Antarctic airspace now, so we cross 60 south. Well, about an hour and 50 minutes time, we should start to see the bridge. excited and maybe a little bit apprehensive about doing night shift but I have my good friend Zhao Long here who's going to be doing it with me yeah I would quite like to stay here a bit longer this place is wonderful yeah can't really beat the view out the window in the morning. There, JCR. <laughs> Last cruise, Jim. Yeah, I, I didn't think actually so. know that. I think so. Perhaps, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be a good one. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Seven weeks. Yeah. I'm James Clark Ross. I won't want to give up. <laughs> Dimes Cruises. It's been a five-year program where we've been trying to understand um, some of the physics uh, behind the Southern Ocean. So, for example, how the deep water in the Southern Ocean gets back to the surface. Um, so we've been making measurements out here now for five years. It's been about seven different cruises, of which I've been on this is my fourth. Uh, and this is the sort of grand finale, if you like. The Southern Ocean plays this very central role in controlling the Earth's climate, not just of Antarctica, but of the planet as a whole. Um, so although we live at the northern end of the North Atlantic, and we're very remote from the Southern Ocean, in fact, what goes on down here is fundamentally critical to improving our predictions of how our climate regionally is going to change into the future, as well as the climate of the globe as a whole. And because it doesn't have any circumpolar barriers, it actually connects all the other ocean basins in the world. So the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Ocean all get waters fed into them from the Southern Ocean. STIME stands for Diapycnol and Isopycnol Mixing Experiment in the Southern Ocean, which is a little bit of a mouthful. To understand what it means, you've got to understand a little bit about how the ocean works. So the ocean is what we call stratified, which means it's made up of, of, of layers of different density waters, so denser layers on the bottom, lighter waters as you get to the top. Um, and what we're trying to understand is how those deep waters can get back to the surface because that's where they can um, exchange things like carbon with the atmosphere. If you like, it's the way the ocean breathes. Imagine if you've got water in a, in a bowl and you start spinning the bowl, you see the surface banking up. And this means that the deep waters down here can just move up along these density surfaces and reach, and reach the surface. And this is called isopycnal mixing. It's happening along a density surface. 
if you had a layer of um, oil and vinegar in a salad dressing and you put some energy in by stirring it up with a spoon and you'd mix it all up. Um, that's the diapignal mixing. So if you like, it's vertical mixing in the ocean. And when we talk about measuring diapignal mixing in the Dimes experiment, we're actually measuring the amount of stirring or amount of um, turbulent motion that's going on. Uh, the Dimes team, which is a collaboration between the USA and the uh, United Kingdom, uh, put a large amount of tracer dye into the ocean immediately upstream of uh, Drake Passage where the water is relatively calm and that was put in at about 1500 metres so well below the surface um, and that over the past five years has moved downstream with the uh, Antarctic circumpolar current and what we're seeing is the dye has uh, been has been slowly spreading vertically through this mixing and as it steps into Drake Passage it's spread out very rapidly. Uh, because the Southern Ocean is so interesting it's also really really remote. It's a long way from anywhere, it's very unpleasant so despite what we see behind me uh, it's a hard place to work and it's not a place that ships go deliberately. They tend to avoid it if they can. Um, so it's also not very well understood. When the waves are too big it's fun for about five minutes and then it very rapidly becomes no fun at all. Despite the sunshine, it's, it's, we've had some rough weather the last yeah. 24 hours and everything's kind of calming down a bit. Um, six, seven metre waves, yeah, it was, it was a little rough, yeah, 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 big waves, but I mean look at the weather now, it's absolutely it beautiful. collect water samples using an instrument called a CTD. This is fixed to the end of a long wire and then sent to the bottom of the ocean. And as it's raised, uh, bottles are fired at different depths and then they snap shut, collecting water samples from those depths. is then raised to the surface where the samples can be analysed. It's about 3,900 metres down, so it's going to take a long time to get down. And when it gets near the bottom, we have to watch this number here to make sure that we don't hit the floor with it. excited about results already and uh, it's yeah. just still early days in the cruise yeah. so bodes well for the rest of the cruise. Yeah. So we put our sample of seawater in here which gets sucked into this tube and then we bubble a gas through it and the gas picks up the tracer and sends it to the big freezing tank behind me which is at minus 68 degrees Celsius. Um, and that traps all of the tracer molecules. We'll take it out of the cold and heat it up, and that sends it through to the big oven at the back, and that produces spikes at certain times, which measures the tracer. My job on Dimes has been to measure this, this the amount of turbulence in the ocean. Um, and it kind of complements what we've been doing with the Dimes Tracer. So the Dimes Tracer measures the sort of average mixing over, over a very large area. But we want to try and sort of match that up with very local on-the-spot measurements of turbulence. Because um, it's these turbulent motions that are actually causing the tracer to spread in the vertical. Uh, and we do that using um, instruments which are called vertical microstructure profilers or VMPs. Uh, and these instruments work, they have very, very sensitive probes on the bottom of them. We deploy them off the side of the ship and they sink all the way to the seabed and as they sink down, these probes measure the very small scale velocity and temperature fluctuations in the water column. One nice way of thinking about it is a little bit like a needle on a record player that, that kind of records the very small scale variations in the record and kind of plays you back a tune. And it's the same thing, this instrument records these tiny fluctuations in the water 
and then that tells us something about the amount of energy and the small scale physics that are going on. Um, so we're really kind of getting to grips with the different scales um, of how things happen in the ocean. And it, it's, it's pretty exciting to think that actually it's these tiny, tiny motions which are having this profound effect on how the kind of global ocean system works, which itself then feeds back into the climate system and you know, the weather we experience in the UK. What have we got out of time so far? We've, we've got a, a, a huge amount of it so far, um, and it's actually quite impressive that it's still going, um, and already we've made some quite strong advances. <laughs> yeah, we think we found this deep kind of convective current, which is like a deep underwater waterfall yeah. Underwater waterfall? Oh, Underwater yeah. waterfall. <laughs> Coming um, down the slope, um, yeah. continental slope. Which yeah. we don't think it's really been... It's, I think there's some observations which have hinted at it before, but I don't think anything's captured it quite... There's quite so many different types of observations. I think one uh, aspect of being at sea is that you can focus on just one thing. It's very therapeutic intellectually just to be able to focus. Um, that's the first thing I think of. But the other thing, the second thing, and probably equally uh, pleasurable is the camaraderie of the people who are all working together for this uh, single goal. And that's always been a great pleasure. And. Um, a third thing which isn't as important as the other two is somebody's cooking for you and washing the dishes and you don't have to do any of that. <laughs> The cruising up the Antarctic Peninsula is really dramatic, massive snow-capped peaks with, uh, with whales frolicking in the foreground. It's a really dramatic, pretty experience. People pay a lot of money for that, but we're, uh, we're out here enjoying ourselves. and <laughs> Some of us are being paid for it. <laughs> Every day you go into work and you're doing something that nobody else has ever done before. It's a really exciting um, field to be working in, especially in a big project like this where we get to go out and make measurements and visit amazing places. Um, yeah, to work really closely with people like um, Jim Ledwell and Mike Meredith, who are um, very impressive scientists, and I've already learned so much just you know in the short time that we've been working together. It's a really different experience. Uh, being at sea is. You know, it's very different from the day-to-day -day life where, you know, as a scientist it tends to be quite office-based. But being out here, it's, it's an adventure really. Wouldn't you like to figure out? Well,